Welcome to Jesus Network News. I'm Heather, your JNN anchor. Today we take you a story that broke a long time ago. The Pharaoh of Egypt wants all the baby boys born of the Hebrew slaves killed. For more on the story, we go to the Bible, the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 1, verse 15 to 21. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whose name was Shifra, the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on their birth stools, if it's a boy, kill him. But if it's a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwives come to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And, it, and because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. That's amazing. Our crews are live as this story unfolded. Let's now go to Egypt and see the amazing courage of these women. What is up with the Hebrew slaves? There are so many of them. They keep growing in number. They'll soon outnumber us Egyptians. They can make us slaves. This isn't good. What should I do? I got it. I will ask the midwives that deliver the Hebrew babies to kill all the baby boys. Guards, send for the Hebrew midwives. Pua, Pua, I just came from the Pharaoh, and do you know what he's asking us to do? He's asking us to kill all the baby boys that we deliver. He wants us to birth them and then throw them into the river with the crocodiles. That's what he said. Shifra. It'll be okay. No, it won't be okay. He wants us, we are being asked to kill baby boys. Kill babies. That's not what we do. We birth them. Breathe. Just like we tell our moms, in through your nose and out through your mouth. God has promised that he will watch over us. It, what do you think? But I think if we breathe long enough, the pharaohs will still kill us. We cannot do what God has said is wrong. Are you sure? You know, Pharaoh is very powerful. What if we don't do it? He'll kill us. He'll kill our families. I know what we can tell him, that the Hebrew women have their babies before we get there. So that way, it'll protect their babies and our families. We can have courage to do what is right. I need to say that with you. We can, we can have, have courage, courage to, to do, do what, what is, is right. right. We can, we can have courage to do what is right. We can have courage to do what is right. Wow! But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king commanded, but let the boys live. Way to go, Pua and Shifra. It takes a lot of courage to do the right thing. We have seen that God gives us strength to do what is right. You can write that on your mirror. Well, with your parents' permission, of course. Wait. Wait, this just in. Here at JNN, we have a reporter live at a hospital with a nurse. She delivers babies and helps mommies just like the midwives in our story did. We are so happy to have Tracy Funk, a labor and delivery nurse that has been working full time for many years, but we're gonna hear her story about, a little bit about what it's been like the last few months. And so Tracy, welcome and thank you. And would you just share your story with us today? Hi friends, my name is Tracy and I have been a nurse who works in labor and delivery. I help babies just like Shipra and Pua did. And I've wanted to be a nurse since I was in elementary school, the age you are now. We would have career days, days where we would dress up with what we wanted to be when we grew up. And since I was little like you, I have wanted to be a nurse. And I've now been a nurse for 25 years, longer than most of you have been alive. As I've grown older and as I've grown deeper in my faith, I realized that this is what God was calling me to do. I serve him by caring for others. Every day that I work, I get to bring new babies into this world. I get to experience God's miracles every day. Our theme first from Ephesians 
2.10, and I'm gonna paraphrase this a little bit, friends. It says that God created me to do his good works. He created me the way I am to do this. He created me to be a nurse. I believe the one gift that he gave me is compassion and caring for others. I also believe that he gave me a mom who is compassionate and caring for others. And although she has never been a nurse, she has modeled that behavior and I have copied that behavior from her of caring for others and being compassionate. So that caring nature that my mom gave me and my education has prepared me to be used by God in many ways. Even things outside of my job at the hospital. For many years, I was a camp nurse at Wesley Forest. I have been able to care for family members and when they've been ill, and I've been able to help people in my congregation when they've been ill and have questions about their health care. And I've even had the awesome blessing of being with family and friends when they welcome their little babies into the world. When people comment on my caring nature, I sometimes say, that's just how my mama created me, or raised me. But now, I also have to remember to say, that's how my Heavenly Father created me. In our Bible story today with Shipra and Pua, they showed tremendous courage in doing what was right by not killing those the, the little baby boys. In the beginning of this pandemic and the coronavirus, I would never have thought that I was courageous. In fact, I was anything but courageous. I was scared. I was scared that as, as I went to work that I would bring this bad virus into my family and could make them sick. Um, I felt very blessed to be an essential worker, that I had a job to go to, that I would still get paid, I could still provide for my family and buy them the food that they wanted. But this job that I've loved to do for so long, I didn't want to go to it. I, so I wasn't feeling very courageous. But I realized I had to go to work. I had to go to work for my new moms and my new dads as we brought their new babies into this world. And I had to go to work to be there for my coworkers. As with most hospitals, um, we've limited the number of um, visitors that can come into the hospital. And so when a new mom has a baby, she's only allowed one support person in there. And for some moms, they wanted their moms and their aunts and their sisters to be with them during this joyous event. And that's not allowed. And so some of them were feeling that they weren't supported. And I think we as nurses have been that extra support that they've needed in this time. Um, and we've given them courage. God has used us as nurses um, and other healthcare workers to give the new moms and dads the courage they need to get through this time. Thanks, friends. Thank you so much, Nurse Tracy. It was wonderful to hear your story. And please extend our thanks and gratitude to all of your coworkers that are making sure you are here for us when we need you and offering that emotional support, that piece that we may not have even thought of. So thank you and please our, extend our gratitude to all of your coworkers. Thank you. Thank you to everyone in the field. That was great information about being courageous. I'm being told that our Be Essential for Jesus producer has some information for you. Thank you, Heather, and great work, team. You have all heard the scriptures, seen the Bible story, and heard from some actual current day essential workers. Now let's talk about what's next. You have received a list of ideas and activities for you to bring to life at home. Use your checklist as a guide to those next steps. And remember, kids, be courageous and go be essential for Jesus. Hold your head up high, don't fear
Jesus.